Welcome back to the channel. It's time to peel off another one of these practically unrestorable units, but one that is actually fairly complete. I say fairly loosely. So anyhow, this CT 70 or trail 70 is going to be the next project on JT's customs. I have an extra frame. There may be a couple of parts on that and another one here. This is the fairly rare manual, like the four speed manual in green but i'm not i'm not under any illusions that i'm going to get much off of these but to keep the honda bolts you know it's nice to have these oem bolts and uh you know you just never know something or maybe even looking at it and just saying oh that's how that goes so Let's take a look and a first look at the CT7. Boy, it took two people to get it in here because both wheels are frozen. And there it is on the stand. So it's now tear down and assess. That's what we're going to do. So just going to start tearing things off of it. We've got a lot of stuff that has come off. I'm going to have to pull this head with this exhaust pipe. And hopefully I can turn the head around so that I can get some PV blaster up in the hole and let it sit there for a few days. Because this exhaust pipe here, it's not moving. And we've got, you know, all the seat off, the tank out, some handlebars off. And we just keep moving on. This is one of the first things that I've come across that I either can't get new OEM or, you know, it's just broken. The, this tab is broken. This, I think this is, yeah, see, that's just dirt. These are still in good shape, but that's too much stress to put on the engine. Someone standing on these pegs, the weight of their uh, body just, you know, might just tear these or crack the case. So I want to make sure I have all four of these. And, uh, you know, that's, that is one rusty kickstand. So I'm going to look for replacements on this. But this is the first thing that actually has needed to be replaced. And uh, other than just regular wear items and a few things here and there. I got the rear brake levers off. A couple other things. And I've got the motor dropped down. And I found a big, huge black widow in there. A little rusty in there. A little corroded in there. And the teardown is going well. The engine's out. Now, one thing I've noticed is, I don't know if you can see, that bearing is spinning in the hub. So I'm going to have to figure that out. That shouldn't be spinning in there. This can spin. But that outer race should be snug. The bearing came out real easily. So I'm going to wipe this down and look at what we got. All right, so what there is, is there's a little bit of a lip I can feel a little lip in there. So what I'm gonna do is order the bearing and I'm gonna just check it out from there. I've got other wheels I can salvage off of other bikes in the boneyard, so I'm not too concerned. We're getting a little further. Next, we're gonna work on this front end, get it pulled apart. This exhaust is still giving me fits. <clears throat> I soaked and soaked and soaked with the PB Blaster. I added, a a little heat and then I soaked again 
Uh, then, and this was like uh, going on for a couple of days. So now I didn't want to bend the exhaust pipe. So what I did is I, I heated it a little more than I did before and it actually broke loose a little. I don't know if you can see it. See that movement? I actually get, I finally get some movement in it. Which tells me I might be, this might be coming out. Oh, that's hot. Gotta come out, huh? Bust this head up. There. Oh my goodness, that's been that's been days, days. Awesome. It's a little further torn down. I've got the tensioner out. I have the flywheel off, exposing the points here and the alternator, which. Don't look as bad as the ATC 70 I did. So I'm gonna take all this apart. And I got the head off. Yeah, there's a little rust in the bottom, laying in the bottom of the piston where some moisture got in there. Uh, nothing big. And on the head, I don't see any gouges or areas where maybe the valve stuck open or they had a bent valve at one time. It all looks pretty good. There is one little spot here, and I don't know, it's like a piece of the fin right here is missing, because this rubber grommet should be sitting like that with, with a little, with a piece of casing coming over. So we'll see, and uh, just keep tearing it down. And I keep tearing it down, got the case about ready to split bagging and tagging it and I take pictures and I point to the parts as they come off it just helps you know sometimes the schematic won't show you whether this ring here if the large part goes towards the crank or not you know, just things like that and so if you notice I'm actually just really accelerating forward and that's because this is the same engine other than the kickstart feature as the CT or ATC 70 that I just did. So if you really want to know how to get into the motor, there's plenty of videos on YouTube, but there's also my ATC 70 that I did a little more detailed uh, video on the engine and how to put it back together. So let's just keep tearing it down. Next, pretty close to just splitting the cases. And we're all tore down. So from here, it's just assessing everything, taking a good look at what I got to replace and start with the cleaning. So I've got all the motor parts here and we're in Peter Hip's Hip Racing. Peter Hip Hip Racing. And we're just going over all the parts because he's the man. He knows what's going on. And we're just checking out the cases and how bearings are fitting and how the the crank looks and all that stuff all right so peter went over the whole motor and we've got some parts to order and the shop is dedicated to hondas and he's got some just awesome pictures of old race days hip racing all of his trophies and he is the Honda man here in Reno so I have a really really good place to bring these Honda engines and find out how they're how they're doing so we're off to lunch and I'll be ordering up everything here in the next day or so <laughs> i thought i'd show you how i am getting this this is the 
uh, cam chain tensioner wheel that goes to the it goes to the oil pump. This slot right here this fits into a a part of the oil pump, and so when it's the oil pump is turned off of this wheel down here, that goes through the timing chain. So after I got back from Peter's shop, he mentioned that this might be a reverse thread. Well, it's not. So what I do is I take a punch, a round punch. I mean, this is what I did this time. I, I'm filming it so I know what to do next time because I forget. And then I've got a real wide chisel that's going to go into this slot somewhat like the, you know, the oil pump would fit into it. And get that kind of centered and put this punch down on that tooth and that holds the gear down there and then just take open end adjustable open end and turn it it doesn't take much there's not much torque on it but it's a it's better than trying trying to grab this shaft with vice grips or whatever else or a smaller screwdriver because I've narfed up the edges here so anyway that's out. So I got the engine pretty much figured out. And there's not uh, anything that's going to keep me from rebuilding the original engine except the piston and the cylinder are gone. There were 50 over and then they just rusted out sitting. So what I have here are the cases and the head and all these little miscellaneous pieces that I'm going to send off and get cleaned up. And uh, they do a really bang up job on these. So I'm going to get these in the mail. And then it's time to order all the parts. This is kind of the last part to the puzzle. I've got to get in here. And I've got to figure out what I need to get these things back together. And get this broken out so that I can paint it. So with that done, then we're probably going to move on to paint. First thing is to take these off. Now there's a little hole in here for a spanner wrench, which I don't have. Of course, I don't have that small. And I'm going to get one because I'm sure uh, there's an adjustable spanner I saw from 3 quarter to 2 inch, which would do a whole bunch of things on these bikes. So I'm just going to use a pair of pliers. And I really had to grip tight for the first but now it's just coming, so we'll get that off. And that came off nicely, and the whole fork will just come on out. And there you have it. So underneath here, pull that away, and in here we're gonna have a roll pin. We're gonna look for it in here. I think I see it right there. It's a small roll pin, and we're gonna press that out. And they're both out. There's the roll pin. You can see it right there. So we've got to press that out. So in, you basically clamp this in, in a vise, not very heavy, not very strong. And you use a proper size punch and you just push it out. It comes out, it doesn't, it, it's not super tough to get out. And of course I didn't have the proper punch, so I used a nail, uh, the right side, the back of a nail. And it came out. And you just pull it apart. Okay, so this little piece here on the end, there was there's this piece, and that could be broken or it could be split that way. Just probably can go right back in. I mean, I'm not going to completely renew everything on this. But anyway, this is difficult to get off. You just need to take a, a a punch and then you just start tapping it and eventually it comes off. And so then there comes your slider and that slider has got a ton of grease on it and your seal is up in there. And the boot, everything has to go on this when you Put it back together the boot everything needs to be on it before you start to reassemble it or else you'll have to pull it back all 
apart again to put the boot back on. So there it is disassembled. I'm going to clean it up. Well, it's about time for this segment of the video to end. It's, uh, I'm trying to keep them to less than an hour if I can. Now, Chico, he wanted me to show you again all of the ordering process that we go through. So what I've got here is, you know, from the start, the first thing I removed was the, was the seat, hinge, seat, complete. And I write down all the OEM numbers, and you do that, and how many. Then how much Partzilla charges, how much Rocky Mountain charges, and then I highlight in yellow where I've actually ordered it from. So Rocky Mountain is obviously less expensive than Partzilla. Uh, some things you can't get, and Dr. ATV, there's a lot of things here. Um, Oh, yes. That, okay, Chico. All right. Okay, I'll show them the other page. All right. So, but to give you an idea, this is page one. Page two. Is this okay, Chico? You want to show how much work you've done? Three. Four. I think that's it but four sheets of ordering. And that just keeps him up long hours at night, you know, searching and searching for all those parts that just can't be found, right? Sometimes they can't be found, right, Chico? So we're gonna end it right here. Um, and we're gonna, when we come back, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with plating, we've got a lot of bolts to plate. I've got uh, a trick that Peter taught me about this bearing. Uh, the parts are coming, so I really can't even put the forks back together. But I can certainly clean them all up. This is kind of a before. And is that just really nasty? Before. And after we're gonna uh, put new seals in this but this does not have any sort of uh, oil like fork oil you just grease up the uh, the sliding areas you just grease it up real good and the seal keeps the grease in that's all it is so we are headed to the next video and maybe even if I get my chrome back on this little three-wheeler, even uh, another video of the final on the three-wheeler. But for now, we're just waiting for parts. Oh, and I want to show you this. Look at that. That is a parts stack. All that stuff's got to be renewed. There's a box with the motor parts. These are just extra motor parts, but here's the painting pieces and the bare frame. And we'll get going on the, the plating while we're waiting for parts and the, uh, and the paint, which I've already ordered. And by the time all that stuff comes in, hopefully I've got everything plated and a lot of stuff cleaned up. So on the next video, we will see you then.